Diabetes is next. There are about 16 million cases reported in the United States. Many of these are type 1 or juvenile onset. Juvenile onset diabetes can occur at a very young age, even during infancy. It would involve a lot of ketoacidosis, the production of ketones in the body, high blood sugar levels, and an autoimmune response on the cells of the pancreas that produce insulin. These may be from viral or toxin causes. In general, about 5 to 10 percent of the diabetics have type 1 diabetes. Type 2 diabetes is adult onset. And like I said earlier, it may result from having obesity and a decreased insulin resistance. It's also accompanied by an elevated or reduced normal insulin. Many of these patients, maybe up to 80 percent, are obese. And there may also be some form of genetic influence here as well. Our exercise prescription, three to seven days per week. If the individual is obese, we're going to look more at the obesity exercise prescription for the frequency and focus it more on seven days per week. Our duration, 20 to 60 minutes of continuous exercise. We want to do large muscle activities to try to encourage as much caloric expenditure as possible and intensity, the rating perceived exertion, or 40 to 80 percent of the oxygen consumption or VO2 reserve. Some precautions with diabetics. You may need to have some additional carbohydrates on hand, something that can be quickly assimilated into the bloodstream. And so these should be readily available when you're exercising patients that you're either not familiar with or don't have a real good control of their blood sugar. So you may want to check blood sugars regularly in new patients that come in for exercise or in patients that just aren't able to control their blood sugar as well as they should. Other precautions. Prior to exercise, blood sugar should be lower than 250 milligrams per deciliter. If we need to raise the blood sugar prior to exercise, we would want to do this with some simple carbohydrates. If the blood sugar is in the range of 80 to 100 milligrams per deciliter, this would be the time to do that. If blood sugars exceed 300 milligrams per liter per deciliter, do not exercise the patient. Blood sugar levels may actually increase at this point. Have them be aware of regular foot hygiene. And remember, there are other things that can happen to diabetics that have not been well controlled for many years. For example, neuropathies that involve silent ischemia, blunted heart rate responses, tingling in the extremities. Uh, and microvascular complications that may involve the eyes or the kidneys may also be uh, another side effect of someone with diabetes. Also make sure that diabetics know when they're taking their insulin and comparing that to their exercise time. We usually want to avoid exercise during peak insulin times to prevent hypoglycemia.